What's up, everybody? First and foremost, welcome to the NYG All In Podcast. My name is Victor Cruz. The man you see to my left is Mario Manningham, my teammate on that Super Bowl team in 2011. Two of the three of the greatest wide receivers in Giants history, in, in my opinion. But obviously, uh, we're here, man, 10 years. Man. 10 years, dog. I mean, I can't even believe it's been this long. It feels like it was yesterday. We were out there running around, yeah. catching footballs, winning games. Starting that season off, or at least coming through training camp, it was weird because we knew we were good. We knew we was a good team, but we knew we had to prove ourselves. Yeah. Like me, you, and Hakeem, I mean, we three guys from three different areas, right? Three right. different places. Talk to me about, like, your journey into the league and how us three together kind of felt like, you know, kind of the, the right timing for it all. My journey, like, after I got drafted, like, the guys that, that was here when I came in, Plexico, uh, Monty Toomer, David Tyree, Hickson, um, Sonoris Moss, they was always a couple years older than us. From that first year until the next year, it's like everything changed because Toomer, you know, he was retired. Plexico, he wasn't on the team no more. And Hickson, you know, just he got, I think he ended up getting injured mm -hmm. the beginning of the season. But just, it was, it seemed like our roster always been deep and we always been good, but only two or three guys, they, you know, they was cool, they was safe. And mm -hmm. when I first came in, I felt like that about the upperclassmen. So it was, it was a challenge, but man, I'm glad it all panned out. And to this day, I'm glad I had y'all too. And, you know, just riding with it with me that Super Bowl year, man. That was just, it was sweet. Yeah. Right. I remember That's them training camp days. I just remember being nervous, dog. I mean, you know, they were good. They were draft picks, chilling, you know, just trying to figure it out. But I was still a free agent trying to, like, make it happen, right? Still trying to make it work. Still trying to put my best foot forward. Still feeling like I could get cut any day. One of the, you know, Grim Reaver walking in. We knew what he looked like. Everybody knew who he was. But just continuing to keep battling along, continuing to have guys like you and Hakeem that kind of kept pushing me, right? Kept telling me like, yo, yeah. if you catch all these balls, if you just catch every football that comes your way, good things will happen. I'm gonna just rewind you, because y'all forgot Cruz the year before what he did in the stadium. <laughs> I just remember like little flashes of you just getting off the line. And caught, running down the sideline for a touchdown is Victor Cruz. Hell of a play by that kid. You know the plays he it used to make, man. Like it was just, man. It was like we ain't we ain't want to be the weak link. Yeah, you know, yep, like it was yep. just it was crazy, man. Like you you worked hard, man, just to see that process and just to see how you ended up. Mm -hmm. You know your career ended up just here, man. I just thought it was just like we would never see anything like that in that short span of a time. I feel like. And it's crazy because that first year when I pulled my hamstring and I got put on injured reserve and then, you know, receivers started getting hurt, I was like, man, did I miss, yes. like, you start thinking, yes, like, you did do, I miss you the do. moment, yeah, you know, did I miss do. my opportunity? Yeah. And, uh, and then thankfully it came back around. But I remember just, you know, it was y'all, it was everybody else that kind of pushed me because I knew I was coming from, like, a small school. I knew I had to, like, just work harder yeah. than, than the average because I had to prove myself to y'all who's coming from... North Carolina, Michigan, like real schools that like, you know what I mean? Y'all yeah. put the work in. And I was like, I gotta be able to match that level at some point to some degree. For and the sure. only way I'm gonna do that is if I put my best foot forward out here every single time, you know? Yeah. But thankfully, that following year, um, I was able to redeem myself and that Philly game was the game that really, you know, kind of turned the corner for me. Yeah. It, because it coming into that game too, I remember all week they was the dream team. They remember all of that? Yeah. They like, had every Smitty went over there, obviously. Like Namdi. Mike Vick was over there. Namdi. Asante on the other side. They had DRC. Shady, DRC. Like they had everybody and they, we came they in there and got it done. Manning back to throw. Zips one left. Caught by Cruz. Runs out of a tackle to the 40. Up to midfield. Makes another man miss to the 45. Down the left sideline. There goes Cruz. 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown Giants. 74 yards. And he does the salsa. And the salsa was born then too. Let's not forget about that. Yeah, and it was the same week as the... Same week. Same week. First yeah. touchdown, the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. The whole yeah, thing. Yeah. You know, Coach Sullivan was the one who actually told me to do it all week long and was asking me to do something for my heritage and my culture. And I was like, Coach, you're bugging right now. Like, I'm, <laughs> this I'm my first start. The first, I'm trying uh, to remember top the top 10 plays. Gonna be. <laughs> I'm trying to remember the top 15 <laughs> plays. And you're telling me about dancing somewhere. Oh, like, what? Man. But I just, uh, you know, that first catch up the sideline and I broke the tackle, two tackles, and made it up the sideline for a touchdown. I was like, 
I got to do this joint now. Like, yeah. it's only right. It's only right. <laughs> and then I did it, and then we kept, you know, scoring, kept winning, and that kind of snowballed into the season that we had. Yeah. And then, the, you know, the salsa took on a life of its own after that. I'm telling you. Okay, uh, oh, 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 number one salsa dance in the league. Cruise <laughs> <laughs> rings throughout MetLife Stadium. Let's take the people into the huddle a little bit with Eli and just kind of being around him and what that felt like and just the preparation. I don't think people understand, like every Friday after practice, we would go right before we showered, any of that, yeah. we would go right into the in the receiver room with Eli and he'd have probably what, 12 or 13 yeah. plays. That plays he that he know go, he's, he know gonna work. Like, exactly. On this down, third down and whatever, short, long whatever like mm -hmm. we just know he always knew what they was going to be lined up in so he always wanted to have us prepared because he just sees things that we didn't see as a receiving core like him mm -hmm. playing with all the rest of these receivers over the years and you knew on that friday to pay attention because yes. like if he's circling you like yo vic look this guy comes down on this play we want to run this yes. specific play to attack that yes. so when we see this coverage inside the 20 stay you know keep your alert up keep your yeah. eyes up but nobody made those adjustments better than Eli. Nobody saw that blitz zero. Nobody. Better than Eli, yo, for nobody. real, bro. He knew when it was coming. He knew the tendencies. He called it out. He got us to the right play every single time. After a while, you kind of take that for granted mm -hmm. until you go somewhere else yeah. with a quarterback that's not as you right. know, experienced. And you're like, right. okay, this is different. So I think it was, you know, we got man, spoiled. We, we got so spoiled Eli, early. That was did. my, you know, we did. not every day you get to be around a Hall of Famer like that and, and a exactly. guy that been around that much football yeah so eli we appreciate you g definitely okay coach coughlin now the leader of all leaders offense is on two here we go break down break down good ball good ball be smart be smart here we go come on man we need the work let's go let's go you understood that he was tough love but you knew it was always about the team it was always about putting what's best for the team forward but at the same time he was always about you and making sure you were okay too at the same time. And he did a good job of like balancing those two things. I think with, with Coach Coughlin, like you have to earn his respect. You know, you, just cause you a football player here, that, that's, that's not good enough. Like now it's, you know, he was trying to teach you how to be, you know, a football player on the field and off the field, knowing that you still have things that have to carry you on, you know, after and while we doing it. But he was one of them coaches that like, you may not, like, man, why are we doing this? Mm -hmm. But it just makes a whole lot of sense why. Like, man, why are we wearing suits? And it is, <laughs> you know, it's just, he's one of them respectable coaches, I mean, around the league. But I'm glad that he's how he is. Like, Clock's five minutes fast, call yeah, from time, the yeah. whole thing. I never if, forget If you're on time, to, you're late. <laughs> you're late. If you're on time, you're late. All you kids out there listening and watching, if you're on time, you're late. Okay, you hear me? Because um, Coach Coughlin didn't play that, man. He came from a military background, and he wanted to make sure that, like, everybody was held accountable for what they did. Yes. And then that, in turn, without even knowing it, it helped us be better men. You know what I'm saying? It helped us mm -hmm. be better men, better fathers, and the whole thing. Good teams become great teams when their members trust each other enough to surrender the me for the we. All right, guys, I'd like to welcome in my guy. He came in to join us. He heard we was talking some football, talking about our season, talking about when we hoisted that Lombardi trophy. So I got to bring in my guy, the third person in our trio of phenomenal receivers of all time, Hakeem Nix, number 88, double Ocho. What's up, Hawk? Talk to me. Man, what's up, family? How y'all doing, man? Uh, what's going on? Hey, nothing. Always good to hear your voice. Always good to see you. Now, as we talk about the season, man, we just wanted to get into our chemistry. I don't think a lot of people know just how, how tight our bond was, how we talked to each other, you know, how you predicted Mario was gonna score the touchdown in the NFC chip game. A lot of people don't know that. Yeah, like, just talk about our chemistry a little bit and, and how week in and week out just push each other to be, to be great. Man, you know, we were just locked in, man. I think it came from our bond, you know, from training camp and it led on all the way through the season, man. And I think the way we just helped each other out with tips, you know, if I, if I did this good, I mean, you know, you bought that. If you did that good, I bought that. Same thing for Mario. And I think we just all let everything link in together, man. And shoot, man, we were just authentic with it, man. It was that yeah. dog. Like, we just, I remember scoring touchdowns or, or being, you know, in the end zone, the hockey just run up to me like, you a dog, boy. Like, just getting <laughs> me hype. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I am a dog. Like, what they saying? But that was the energy, dog. Like, we got each other better. Like, we made sure that 
everybody was held accountable for we what did. they did, man. And that was the biggest thing, both on and off the field. Like me and Hakeem, I remember when I was having my daughter, I would talk to Hakeem all the time about like, what's it like raising a little girl? What's it like, you know? So not only did we have conversations about football stuff, but we had conversations about life. Yeah, man, that's because that's what we needed, man. Because in order to bond on the field, you know, we had to be bonded off the field too. You know what I mean? Yeah. We always, should, we did something together probably like once a week. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All three of us. Whether it was working or whether it was just going out to eat the wide receivers or sitting down, breaking down the film together. And we had that time to always talk and relate. And once you can relate to your person beside you, man, you're going to go hard for them. Yeah, speaking exactly. of relating, I want to get into, a couple, you know, Eli had eight fourth quarter comebacks, man, drives in that season. And I don't know if Eli season, would tell you this. It's be it was because of us, you know what I'm saying, that we got him. You know, those drives and everything. But specifically, I want to talk uh, New England, the first one with Jake Ballard when he had that crazy catch across the middle. Manning back to throw. Throws the seam. Ballard makes a twisting catch inside the 35 to the 33. First down, Giants. What a catch by Ballard. That game, that New England game, he like he was he, he played sensational. Mm -hmm. Like for him to catch, you know, game winning catch. Like that was just everything. Third and goal at the one. Manning's going to throw. Throws it left to the end zone. Touchdown, Giants. Jake Ballard. The New York Giants jump off their bench in jubilation as they have rallied with two fourth quarter touchdown passes and the Giants beat New England 24 to 20. It's like when Eli is, I'm coming to you. You don't want to do the wrong things, man. <laughs> you know, and he, it was easy for him, man. He was everywhere he needed to be, catching every ball, blocking assignments. I'm sure it was, was a high percentage, man. It was just one of them games for him. And he was big for us the whole year, too. I mean, it was just Coach Coffin's theory, right? He yeah. always had players that knew their jobs. And yeah. I think all, each and every one of us knew exactly what our jobs were. Yeah. And, and, and we understood that now. Going to Dallas, Obviously, needed to come back to win that joint. Eli has another one of those crazy comebacks. I think Hawk had two or three catches on that drive. And one thing about those, like, two-minute drills, we worked on them so much in practice, mm -hmm. bro. Like, yeah. by the time the game came around, <laughs> we was good. Yeah, like, we yeah. knew exactly what we needed to do in order to be great, in order to succeed. So we knew what time it was there. But, uh, Hawk, talk about JPP, man, and, like, just his energy all year long, and then to have that block and to just be, you know, and obviously JBP now got two chips. You know he got another one on us yeah. now. But just <laughs> talk about his energy, man, and just how he really, like, was one of those guys that helped our team win. JPP had that motor, man. Um, and then, you know, at the time, I think that season, when they had, like, 16 sacks? Yep, 17, yeah. something like that. Yep. And that's a safety. Jason Pierre-Paul, relentless effort there. Like broke a record or something like that. So that boy, he just had a different motor. And I think it kind of intrigued the whole defensive line, if you ask me, because they were like, you know, Tuck and O.C. and all them like, yo, we got this young pup here. We got to show him what it is. Yeah. You really make a name for yourself tonight, boy. Blue. Huh? Hey, what you job, Blue. So boy, just the competition cool. battle that was there on that, uh, on that line, man, alone. Same way in our wide receiver room. You know, every guy wanted to step up and be the guy and make the play. And when you called on, you just got to do your job. And JPP did a great job of it. And now Dan Bailey, at the end of regulation, will try to tie this up with a 47-yarder from the left half. What a game. Snap is good again. Kick on its way, and it's blocked! Blocked by the Giants! And it bounds into the end zone and through the back of the end zone, and the Giants will win it! Individual rolls up. Yep, Jason Pierre-Paul, JPP. And the New York Giants have saved their season. This. as they've come to Dallas and defeated the Cowboys. Let's fast forward a little bit to that Jet game because obviously we understood, like, from that point on, we had to win out. Yeah. Like, you know, we didn't have no wiggle room when it came to our schedule and it came to where we were. We had to win the rest of those games. Coach Coffin made it very clear to us how important it was to put our best foot forward. Basically, our playoffs started then. Yeah. So going into these games, I was like, man, we're going to have to, like, we got to do it. Like, ain't nobody going to do it but us. But... It was one point of disrespect that we don't like, right? You can't be covering up our trophies. Don't be upset because we may have more trophies. Than, that's not my fault. It's not our problem. <laughs> don't try to cover it up. Yes, it's y'all home game, but we still have this history here. This is our stadium, too. Right. So the fact that they covered up our, our, our trophies, it definitely gave us the fuel that we needed. Manning back to throw. 
Throws one to the right, completes it to the right for a first down, and running out of a tackle down the right sideline is Victor Cruz. Chased by Smith, hurdles over him to the 30, to the 20, to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown Giants, 99 yards. On the, the 99 yarder though, like, man, once you hopped over Cromartie and like I said, like anytime, if, if you run into a, a mediocre running safety, not saying, you know, anybody was mediocre safety. He stunk. It's okay. He, well, my fault. I ain't want to say that. <laughs> no, nah, shut up. <laughs> he used to, but no, nah, he was a flat-footed safety, man. We mm-hmm. loved him. Like, mm-hmm. playing as receivers, we love flat-footed safety. So, he took the wrong angle. Like, he might as well should have went west, you know, <laughs> versus going east. But he took the wrong angle, and it was just over after that, man. But the biggest play, I mean, obviously that was a huge play, but the icing on the cake was when Amai ran Buddy smooth over oh into the end zone. I still, I still feel like I got a light concussion off of like yeah. when he put his head down and just barreled him over Ooh. like that, bro. And then swagged in the end zone. So loud. Hand off Bradshaw, cut back lane to the left. Bradshaw inside the 10, to the goal line, touchdown Giants. He ran through three Jets. And one of the Jets he ran through is still on the ground. Wow. Boom, Rodney Poole got knocked over. Game over. That's a closer. So the Giants have won their fifth in a row against the Jets. Bragging rights, and they do it in fine fashion. I mean, 29-14. We get to the Jets game. We're getting ready for the playoffs. Atlanta's coming in. Hi, Diddy, I'm going to just give you the floor because you had one of the most impressive games I've seen. Playoffs, you wanted to make a statement. All playoffs, really, you was making a statement, but this one really kicked it off. Tell us how you felt going into that game. And as you were making play after play, just what was going through your mind and how you felt? Man, shoot, man, we just locked in. You know, mm-hmm. once we came to the game, it was win or go home. And I'm like, shoot, I ain't never tasted the playoffs before. In the previous years, you know, we, we was going home early. So my mentality really was just to play within the system. And, you know, when the, when the ball touched my hand, just do what I had to do with it. Manning back to throw. Slants one right to the end zone. Touchdown, Giants. Akeem Nix. In his first playoff game, Akeem Nix gets his first touchdown catch, and the Giants have the lead. Manning out of the gun, Bradshaw to his left. Takes the snap, he's back to throw. Steps up over the middle, Nix wide open at the 40. 45, runs through a tackle, there goes Nix, gallops over another, he's going to score! 20, 10, 5, touchdown Giants! 72 yards! Eli had actually told me about um, that 70, what, the 72 yard on a shallow cross with the streak X shallow. Yeah. He said, look, it's going to be zone, but it's going to look like man. He said, so stay on the move. So that was just like a coaching tip right there for that specific play that Eli gave me during the whole week. And they had so much space. You know, once we catch it in space, you know what we're going to do with it. Facts. That thing opened up. We just catch and run. Yeah, you, you remember him breaking Buddy off? Yeah, I was just about to get to that. <laughs> I, I, and then he split him. Man, and I was like, oh, yeah, nah. Yeah. Once he, that was once he hit, piece right there. Once yeah. he hit him with the two piece, and then he split it, and he hot, you know, he high stepped through yeah, there too a little yeah. bit. I said, okay, okay, hocking his bag. And he's doing the icky shuffle of the dirty bird. And that 72 yard touchdown pass ties a Giants postseason record dating back to 1982 when Scott Bruner hit Ernest Gray on a 72-yarder against the Niners. The New York Giants are on to the divisional round and a trip to Green Bay against the Packers. We crushed Atlanta, it was 24-2. And then getting oh further in this God. bag, we get to Green Bay. Then you caught that in-cut later and got busy. When he got hit and spent the round. And he got hit and spent the round and kept going. Man. Fastball over the middle, caught inside Packer territory. Nix runs out of a tackle. He's to the 35-30, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown Giants. 66 yards. Great individual effort there. Run after catch is what these receivers do. Now, you can double one, but they're all capable of the same skill set. And now, Hot Diddy goes off again. I don't even know. Oh, man. I still remember this Hail Mary, bro. Like, I know every team on defense practice Hail Mary is just like yeah. we do. Right. And I don't know if any other team is as maniacal and crazy about it like Coach Coughlin. He no. literally used to be running with us. Yeah. He in, jo- in the walkthrough, like, <laughs> are, you, are you where you're supposed to be? In We're going to need this one day. But I say all of that to say, like, now you see where the attention to detail came in and why yep. he was so meticulous yep. about it because of plays like this where you never know when it's going to come up. Giants are going to run another play without a timeout. Six seconds to go. 
Manning back, steps up, heaves one down the middle of the field, into the end zone, and Nix makes the catch for the touchdown! He went up with the big hands and caught it on the Hail Mary! On the final play of the half! I've never seen a Hail Mary work. Like, not even on Madden. Not even, not no even work on like Madden. that on Madden either, y'all. For but real. Man, that was perfect. And that is it. The New York Giants have eliminated the number one seed, Green Bay Packers, as they come to Lambeau Field and outplay Green Bay. They're all in. 37 to 20, the final score. I mean, the playoffs, you could tell that, like, we were ready, man. Like, yeah. we raised our game to a whole nother level. And then once we got to San Fran, because we knew, like, I don't know about y'all, but I knew we matched up with them perfect. Like, I wanted them again. We played them earlier in the year. Yeah. I wanted them again. I felt like we matched up well. I obviously had some unfinished business on the other side of the ball. Yeah. So I just wanted to, like, have another crack at that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I think at, it was that game that all of us raised our level. I always call the, the San Fran game the most grueling physical game that I've ever played in. Like. I just remember that first half, bro, just being so, like, just like Hawks said, yeah. locked in, like, locked in. Manning and Drews are just playing flag football right now. They're playing absolute pitch and catch. Pitch and catch. You're going to have to find a way to get Carlos Rogers some help on it. I know he's the pro bowl corner, and Cruz is just having his way with him right now. Cruz had 112 yards on seven catches already. I mean, it was one of them games where, Kind of the whole season, we know we're going to run into them again. They too good. Like, and they was really that good. They defense, man, was good. But, man, I feel like going into that playoff game, like, we know, like, man, we lost to them earlier that season. We got to come back and get them. Mm -hmm. And that's what it was. So, and it took a lot because it was actually rainy and foggy. Like, if y'all don't remember that, I know y'all remember. Mm -hmm. It was foggy as heck, man. And then man. it was just terrible weather, man. I mean, we got to talk Eli for a second, right? His toughness, which up until this point, I didn't know. I mean, I knew he was tough, but it wasn't until me seeing it in person in San Fran every time those D linemen was getting him to the ground. And we had a good offensive line, like yeah. really, really all pro type, you know, level. And, you know, that showed you how good San Fran was and how tough Eli was that he kept picking himself up mm -hmm. off the ground. How many times we was in that huddle like ripping the grass out of his <laughs> helmet? He had a lot of, a lot of mud, a lot of grass on him that day, man. We knew we had a tough quarterback. We knew how tough Eli was. It was not one. one time in that huddle did he ever complain. Never. Never, but we was on the side of like, damn, damn. We, got, <laughs> damn we gotta keep Eli up, man. Every time we go halfway through the route, we hear, ah, oh, we hear the crowd, yeah. we like, damn, oh. we ain't even, we ain't even three well, seconds into the well. route yet. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, man, our O-line, when we needed them, especially that game, when we needed them to anchor down, yeah. was third and long or, like, one of them tough situations that we had to get out of, they came they came through every they single did. time, bro. Gave Eli just enough time, and Eli did a tremendous job just footwork in the pocket. You know, we really don't give Eli enough credit for the little, yeah. the little yeah, footwork things that he did in the pocket to get himself throwing angles, you know what I mean? So everybody, kids out there, pay attention to that. Go back and watch your Eli tape. If you want to learn some footwork, now, not the fastest guy in the world, but he making the proper footwork. Yeah, in a, to in get a phone booth, it'll there. shake you in a phone booth. Oh booth. yeah, off top. Hawk, <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk to you about. I remember you telling Rio, was like, "Yo, you gonna be the one. This is it. Like, <laughs> be ready. You know what I'm saying?" And then literally, maybe like the next play or two plays later, he caught that touchdown. I actually remember watching a film. And I, Rio, remember too, we was watching film with uh, Eli, and Eli kind of pointed that play out. And you know, after being with Eli, Eli so long, you kind of know when he gonna use what he wanna use. Yeah, right, yeah, exactly. right, exactly. right. I just like, this is the perfect time for it. And I was like, hey, Rio is coming to you. Manning in a shotgun set. Three rushers for the Niners. Manning back to throw. He zips one to the left of the end zone. Touchdown Giants, Mario Manningham. Bob, you said he was going to come up big at some point in this game. They can't double both Cruz and Hakeem Nix. And the Giants are back in front with 8.34 to go. This is one of them ones, like when you see your brothers just like, man, I can't be the weak link. Man, these dudes out here going hard. Mm -hmm. Like, and I'm going to protect what I got to do for us to get to that next level. It, but was, it was just one of those games where it was like, sloppy winning somebody game, gonna have man. to come in like, at some point and, and just do their job. Like yeah. everybody just gonna do what they asked, yeah. asked the, you know, of them to do yeah. and we gonna win. Boots one, returnable for Williams from his own 20. 
Lost the ball, and the Giants say they have it, and they do! Knocked out by Jaquan Williams, Devin Thomas recovered it. When you got the faith, man, it's, it's different. Like, it's totally different. Like, man, ain't no way, ain't, no, ain't gonna beat us. And you could feel that too, week in and week out, bruh. It yeah. was just like, you could just feel that, like, we not gonna be stopped, bruh. Lawrence Tynes from 31 yards to put the Giants in the Super Bowl against the Patriots. Kick on its way, it's got the distance, and it is good! And Lawrence Tynes has done it again. He's kicked the Giants to the second Super Bowl in four years. So we did that, man. We stormed the field. We made it to the Super Bowl. We yelling, we screaming. Tell the people about like just the energy and how we were so locked in. And it, just, it was just a continuation of everything that, ha that happened during the playoffs. Man, I just know um, that whole practice, man, that week, like I don't remember the ball hitting the ground one time from the wide receiver position, even to the running backs out the backfield. That practice just converted over to the game. Y'all remember when we got to the Super Bowl and we was out there warming up? Mm -hmm. Like when we, us three was out there warming up. We like, man, we really here. You just like, okay, this is a different, this is a different thing. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, you know, this game is a different game. It feels different, a different energy. I spent half the time looking up, like looking around, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Super Bowl 46. Man, oh man. I'm trying not to blink because I might miss something. I just think it was all about me. It's about this team, man about this team cherishing this moment. I ain't gonna lie to y'all, man, too, because, like, you know, that's the, that was the second time us playing them as an organization from the first Super Bowl in 2007, and you just being like, this could be their year. Like, you just don't yeah. know. You know what I'm saying? You don't know how the football guys is really looking at it. Goodness. So you just like, man, this could be their year. So I was just happy we were so locked in. I think that's the reason I call it, like, the most mentally gruesome game because we had to think. Like, against a Belichick defense, yeah. you gotta think. Play clock at two. Takes the snap, back to throw. Throws one left, touchdown Giants! Victor Cruz on the slant. And he does the salsa. Us three, we clicking on all cylinders. Our team is clicking on all cylinders. You know, we're going through the game. It's obviously a war, it's back and forth. Later, after the game, obviously, we go back and everybody shows us the film. We watch all the highlights and everything, and we hear Belichick saying it's a cruising Knicks game. And I don't know if you felt it, Hawk, but there was a lot of attention on us. Like, just the way the safeties were shading and different tactics and the way they would show one look and then come out into a double team. But we knew <laughs> that, like, at the end of the day, Eli was going to find yeah. that one-on-one. -on -one. Wherever it was at, whoever was going to have the opportunity, he was going to find that one-on-one, -on -one. and he found Rio. Manning out of the shotgun set, and he's back to throw. Climbs the pocket, deep ball down the left sideline, and it's going to be caught. Was he inbounds? Yes! What a catch. It's not quite David Tyree, but that is pretty close. And Rio always, I mean, he was a tightrope king on that sideline or back of that end zone. He knew exactly where he was at. That seemed like it was, what, a couple of weeks ago? That's what it feel like. Oh, my God. That's what it feel like. We just had more ammunition. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like, certain players just ready to step up, man. And we just knew in a matter of time, like, that's what it was going to be. I dropped a post route earlier that game, man, so I was not coming, like, I wasn't about to drop that one. I would just focus into that replay. Then once I seen the first replay, and then they slow mo I saw he got that. We good. Yeah. So I said, he got that. I screamed so loud, bro. I watched yeah. the replay. I was like, <laughs> catch one, two, bro. Yeah. Like, going crazy. Catch, right, left. Every Super Bowl, bro, you see the one play is always, whether it's a defense, whether it's an interception, whether it's a fumble recovery, whether it's a, a big play, a helmet catch, there's always one play that's going to tell the tale of the game, bro. And I knew, I felt it in my bones that that catch was the, was the factor that changed it. That was like, okay, this is, this is the team that's right. going to win because we made the play. Right, you know what I'm saying? Right, yeah. Then after that, we kind of, we knew we was going to win. Hand off Bradshaw, he runs up the middle. Oh, and he falls into the end zone for the touchdown. He thought about stopping, but he went in for the touchdown. And why not? It's the lead here in the Super Bowl, but it was an almost reluctant touchdown by Bradshaw. 
After but that, we gave man. him two. We gave. I didn't too like. Much I don't like giving Tom Brady. Yeah, that they much almost time. hit him. We hit us with the Green yeah. Bay. <laughs> almost yeah, hit us did. with the Green Bay. King. 100%. On the uh, Hail Mary at the end. Oh my goodness. Brady's back. Brady's under pressure. Brady's chase. Brady heaves one down the middle of the field into the end zone. A jump ball. <laughs> Gronk wasn't too far away. From <laughs> no, that he thing, wasn't. Bro. He wasn't. And if he was 100, because I remember he had like a hammy or something. But if he was 100, he might have dove and who knows. Oh my goodness. And it's. Incomplete, and the ball game's over, and the Giants have won Super Bowl 46. Still will, the heart of the champion. Finish is what Tom Coughlin said, and the Giants have finished off the Patriots in the Super Bowl for the second time in four years. When you know playing, you really don't look at yourself. You look, at, you might look at yourself playing the league, yeah, but you yeah. don't look at yourself as winning the Super Bowl, though. That was just, man, like, that's when I'm like, yeah, we, we hear y'all. We, yeah. Like I said earlier, man, it's, I had a ball playing with y'all, too. Let me touch it, y'all. But we are Super Bowl champions, and these three well, receivers you see before you are, like I said earlier, the three best receiver trio to ever put on a Giants football uniform. But I was just happy I did it with y'all, man. I'm happy I got to, you know, be a part of this journey with y'all. I appreciate playing beside y'all. I appreciate that team, that whole run. Man, you know, we locked in for life, man. Family for life. I know we all in our different endeavors and, you know, where we at in life now, man. But one thing I can say about us, you know, we always stay in touch. So, man, like I said, man, family for life. Family for life. Appreciate y'all, man. Same, same on this side. Y'all always gonna be family. That ain't never gonna change. When you've been through wars and been through battles with two individuals like this, and in and the rest of our team, you build friendships and and relationships for life. So, I appreciate y'all for bringing me in uh, when I was a young rookie trying to make a name for myself, and y'all y'all opened your arms for me and brought me in, and I appreciate that. And it made you know it made my transition to the league that much better. That's been our episode here of the All In, the New York Giants All In podcast. We appreciate you, and uh, tune in next time, y'all. Peace.